Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Paranjoy Gohar Thakurta. We are going to discuss the a scandal which has rocked India's financial sector. The scandal didn't happen today. It happened six years ago. But the regulator of the country's financial markets. SEBI or the Securities and Exchange Board of India has just come out with a report which makes certain shocking revelations of misgovernance and conflicts of interest in the National Stock Exchange. Now, the National Stock Exchange is not just any old stock exchange. It happens to be India's biggest stock exchange. Not just that. At present, it is the world's biggest exchange for trading in derivative instruments, instruments that derive their value from other instruments. And the SEBI report, I mean, parts of what the SEBI has said are salacious, worthy of being included in a script of Bollywood, a Bollywood film script. Maybe one of these days a film will be made on the subject. But what the SEBI report reveals is shocking mismanagement, collusion by senior management personnel and the board of directors to suppress information on appointments, responsibilities, evaluation, salaries from even the market regulator, which is SEBI. So to discuss this, and, and you know, at the epicenter of this entire scandal is Miss Chitra Ramkrishna. She had to resign from her post. She was the head of the National Stock Exchange. And the other person in the eye of the storm is the former group operation officer, Anand Subramaniam, who was appointed as a consultant on the very day Ms. Chitra Ramkrishna joined the NSC on the 1st of April 2015. That was the day she was appointed managing director. She has been disgraced. Mr. Subramaniam has been disgraced. But we'll come to all these issues in greater detail. Let me welcome the guest who's joining me from Mumbai, India's financial capital. I have with me Himendra Hazari. He's an independent analyst of India's financial sector. And he's also a SEBI registered independent analyst. So Himendra, let me ask you to give me your preliminary observations on this scandal that happened more than six years ago, but which is currently rocking the country, the country's financial sector, it's all over the financial media. Let me have your preliminary observations. See, one expects that blue chip companies, which are listed on any exchange, to have very high qualities of corporate governance. Therefore, when these companies are listed, amongst many other companies are listed on any exchange, and in particularly India's leading exchange, one expects, and very rightly so, that the corporate governance in the stock exchange should be far superior than what is seen and what is uh, demonstrated in blue chip companies. Now, sadly and horrifyingly, what we have seen from this report, that there is very poor and abysmal standards of corporate governance, the kind of behavior that uh, the CEO of National Stock Exchange has shown. And even worse, one expects that the board of directors, and in particular, the public interest directors, whose interests and loyalty should be aligned with the public and not with the executive, they have done a, a huge cover up. And sadly, today the media is not naming and shaming those public interest directors. Uh, which has to be done because they also sit on various other blue chip companies. Why don't you name so, you know, Why don't you name some of them, Amindra? Well, you see, you had people, very noted people, 
when when he was appointed when this anand subramanian was appointed and he was informed and the board decided to give him powers very similar to the ceo's powers at that time and this was the board meeting which was held on august 11th 2016 you had mr s b mathu who was formerly from lic he was the chairman of the board you had the famous mr wyach maligam you know who's who's a very eminent chartered accountant and is used by the rbi and consulted by the rbi on many decisions you had the famous justice b n sri krishna you know again a very famous we are a very well known person several committee exactly report. and these people along with professor sadgo uh, sadago and mr sb nayak who was i think representing the interests of lic you had prakash parthasarthi you had abhay havaldar now all these people are very well known and very eminent in both in the corporate sector as well as india's financial sector now how is it that when the board decided to give this individual mr anand subramaniam lot of powers which are which were given to chitra ramakrishna they should have inquired that who is this gentleman what is his experience because the powers and, they were and, giving and, him and and himindra if i'm just interrupting you i'm not even talking i mean not just the power look at the kind of money that was given to him you know i mean 181 2013 there was a contract it was 1.68 crore then in 2014 313 it's 2.01 crore then it goes up to 2.32 crores then 3.33 crores on 164 2015 we find that this person mr anand subramaniam is getting 3.67 crore and it, it it just i mean it's truly mind boggling the kind of money that was given to a person who was appointed on the very same day as ms chitra ramakrishna was appointed as managing director which is in april 2015 see i can understand if the board prior to this board meeting was formally not informed uh, by the executive which is mainly the company secretary and, and chitra ramakrishna or even for that matter even ravi narayan Yeah, you know, who, who heard it? Only, By the way, we were in, we were in college together. Ah, I must say, you have very illustrious companionship. I, I was a schoolmate of Vijay Malia. To add, oh, I practice. see. <laughs> Please continue. This is just an. Asana. I trust you shall not. I trust you shall not include my name also as one of your acquaintances. <laughs> is that? Please continue, Himendra. So I. understand but you know not that i can excuse the board that prior to august uh, 16 when this board meeting was held right sorry august uh, 15th uh, that they were not aware of who this individual was because i think deliberately uh, the chitra as well as the you know the company secretary had not informed the board of this kind of outrageous uh, salary package that was given to anand subramaniam which was totally outlandish because here he was he had no background at all in the markets his salary was benchmarked at the at the and there's only one other gentleman who was the company secretary and president who had that kind of salary you know his name comes in the fy14 and fy15 annual uh, fy15 and fy16 annual report which the board should have noticed that who is this gentleman okay so one yeah he did not bother to find out even before this meeting although his name figured in the annual report but definitely when they approved the pass that were given to him at a board meeting it was their duty in the public interest which they represent to find out who this individual was what was his background and did he deserve to be given such powers Okay. Because if they inquired at that point, in you time, made a you we, made a very important point about the role of the independent directors who are supposed to act in the public interest, and you have pointed out how it is there is clear evidence that they evidently didn't take their job seriously enough. There might even be uh, abdication of their responsibilities. Be that as it may. What about what was happening internally? The internal checks and balances. Here we have Doctor Narasimhan. His his full name is Doctor. 
V. R. Ramas uh, Narasimhan. He was the CRO, the Chief Regulatory Officer. Despite receiving several complaints, at least four occasions in 2016 alone, Dr. Narasimhan tells the Securities and Exchange Board of India that there's been no violation of the rules. In this case, it is the SECC rules. The full form of it is Securities, Contracts, Regulations, Stock Exchanges and Clearing Corporation Regulations of 2012. Your views. See, I have been highlighting and sometimes on your show earlier that the executive management is normally totally aligned to the CEO. You know, even if they are doing something illegal, unethical, their loyalty to the CEO is all important. Now, now, let us look at this. The chief regulatory officer, he can directly report the instances to the regulator, which is the Securities and Exchange Board of India. Now, from this order, we know that he did not do it. So this is the entire issue with corporate India today, that all the institutional mechanisms which are there, uh, in, which are there in the structure, they are just not being utilized because the individual's loyalty is to the CEO and they can see nothing else beyond that. Okay. So whether you are appointed by the shareholders like LIC directors were there or you know other institutions or you are there for the public, for some strange reason, you know, your loyalty, your duty is apparently to always support the executive in whatever they do. All right. Hemindra, let me ask you another question. You are an independent uh, analyst. You are registered with SEBI. Why did it take SEBI such a long time to come out with its report? I mean, all these events happened several years ago. I mean, the, the, these pertain to events that took place five to six years ago. We have had various reports by various journalists, including Sucheta Dalal and Devashish Basu in, in, um, in Money Life. They, they have even a book on the subject, uh, which was released in uh, 2021, June. And, and there have been several reports about the so-called co-location scam, the so-called algo or algorithm scam. I'd like you to explain in simple language what these scandals were. And the second part is why did it take SEBI such a long time to act? To understand this question, I think if you read Suchita Dalal and Debashish very insightful book, uh, you will come to know that SEBI, the relationship between SEBI and the NSC was not between a regulator and a regulated entity. But SEBI was actually facilitating all these kind of uh, loopholes that NSC was exploiting and sometimes brazenly even violating. You know, in some cases, SEBI was actually advising them how to go about something which was uh, bypassing SEBI's own regulation. So the relationship that you see between a regulator and a regulated entity did not seem to hold in the case of the SEBI and the NSC. Because SEBI as a regulator was indeed facilitating a lot of these things. That is what the book very clearly reveals. And therefore... And it's very, again, very sad to say this because I'm regulated and registered by SEBI, is that the Securities and Exchange Board of India has lost tremendous cred credibility as the capital markets regulator. Okay. And that is what we are seeing. We are seeing, in fact, a regulatory capture. Okay. Hamidra, you know, uh, according to this report, where a lot of the information has, uh, that has been disclosed is based on a forensic audit of the NSE's uh, activities uh, done by Ian W. Ernest and Young. And one of the disclosures made is that Ms. Chitra Ramakrishna has been had been sharing confidential and classified information about NSE's organizational structure, its dividend scenario, its, its financial results, its human resources development policy, various other issues. And what people find is really mysterious. And is the involvement of a so-called unknown person, a so-called guru, 
referred to as Siron money. And, and this guru is supposed to be somewhere in the Himalayas, but he seems to be rather well acquainted or well uh, versed with the working of the financial sector, which has led to a huge amount of speculation. And though these confidential emails have been redacted in the SEBI report, people are wondering who this person is, if at all such a person exists, or whether he is a front or, or, or a pseudonym for somebody else. What do you have to say to that? No, one, it is very obvious that it is a pseudonym because uh, we don't have such an identity. Second, it was very easy for a regulator to have authorized any prosecuting agency like the Central Bureau of Investigation or the Enforcement Directorate uh, to find out and check you know, the email ID of this person. Again, the SEBI has not done so. That means it is not even interested in knowing who is this person who was directing the entire operations of the National Stock Exchange. Even though the SEBI's own order indicates that the officer did not buy Ernst & Young's argument that Mr. Anand Subramaniam was uh, the concerned person. That is what the Ernst & Young report alludes to. But this is not what the officiating officer, you know, he does not share that conclusion. Therefore, it was all the more important for SEBI to have, you know, should have asked the enforcement agencies like the police and the federal police uh, to investigate because that's a very simple thing to do because they, they can very easily have found out uh, who this identity of this person was. Okay. Uh, Hemindra, we are aware that Ms. Chitra Ramkrishna, she resigned from the National Stock Exchange on the 2nd of December 2016. And the SEBI report points out that there was, raises certain very serious questions on how the board of NSC allowed her to exit her position. Point number one. Second point is SEBI has barred Ms. Chitra Ramkrishna, the former managing director and chief executive officer, Ravi Narayan, the former vice chairman, and also Anand Subramaniam, the former group operating officer and advisor to the managing director and the chief executive officer. They have been barred from associating with any market infrastructure institution. A monetary penalty of three crore rupees has been imposed on Ms. Chitra Ramakrishna, and the market regulator has asked the NSE itself to forfeit her excess leave in cashment of one and a half crores, 1.5 crores, and a deferred bonus of 2.83 crores. And the market re regulator has also restricted NSE. NSE also has been fined. It has been restricted from issuing new products for the next six months. And Mr. Narayan has to stay away from the market for two years. Mr. Ramkrish uh, Ms. Ramkrishna and Mr. Subramaniam has been barred from participating in the markets for three years. And, and yes, the compliance officer has also been penalized with a six lakh rupee fine and, and uh, um, uh, so on and so forth. The question is, is this, uh, was this, uh, um, uh, what should I say, uh, did they deserve these kind of penalties? Were, were the penalties adequate or inadequate? What are your views in this regard? It was a gentle tap on the NSC's knuckles as well as all the other people who have been show, you know, shown so-called notices. Because the for the NSC... Only a, a gentle, gentle. <laughs> obviously, because <laughs> what is the fine to NSE? It's nothing. In fact, it allows them. I think NSE will welcome this because now they can go ahead with their initial public offering, which they have been trying to do for the last so many years. Now, all they have to pay is this very, very nominal fine, and they can then go ahead and say, now the matter is closed. So the whole approach to me is by SEBI is to shut this matter as early as possible and close it. Now, therefore, it's in the interest of the public and the interest of media to keep highlighting certain sections and dig up more information to show that who is this individual actually directing operations because nobody knows. Because you're directing operations, you are an extra constitutional authority, you are an unknown person, and you are controlling India's leading exchange where you have everyone's public savings are going there, it's foreign capital is coming in there. It's a very... You know, extremely, it's a matter of national security also. 
So these are the things they should have done. Criminal prosecution of all these investors, of all these people. They should have been put into police custody. They should have been interrogated by the police. I mean, I mean, if but you have, very, if you have the top brass of uh, Yes Bank behind bars, if you have the top brass of ILNFS disgraced and put behind bars, you believe that something. Uh, such stern action was called for in this case as well? Most definitely. And the fact that it was not done indicates that some extremely powerful and political interests behind this. Because otherwise, if you and I were doing all this, we would have been put, interrogated and immediately put in judicial custody. If you can haul up human rights activists with virtually no case and put them in jail for two to three years, Without you're talking any about, solid evidence. You're talking about the Bhima Koregao uh, episode. Exactly. And here there is so much evidence of wrongdoing. There's not even a police interrogation. Okay. So it just tells you, the very fact tells you that there's some very powerful political interests involved here. Would you like to speculate on uh, what these powerful interests are all about? Obviously, because uh, you know I do not have any proof. And as an analyst, I must have proof. And that proof must be in the public domain. So, so I cannot give any names uh, to anybody. Uh, all right. Okay. I, I, I had a question which I'd asked you earlier, and I'm now repeating that question. I'd like you to uh, explain in as simple a language as you possibly can. I know it's a very complex matter. This, what is this co-location scam? What is this algorithm scam? If you can kindly uh, just tell us a little bit about these scams. I mean, uh, after all, all the action against... Ms. Chitra Subra, uh, Ramkrishna and, and Anand Subramania uh, are, uh, are linked to what happened. Yes, please. So in the co-location scam, simply put is, there are various servers which execute the trades. Now, the scam said that as per the NSEs, they had therefore fixed the system that certain servers got the information slightly earlier than it was given to the all the servers where the entire market was participating. And on those servers, certain brokers had that early access. So in the market, if you get information, you know, even a couple of seconds earlier than everybody else, it is a huge advantage. And this, the scam says, was well, actually, it was not a glitch in the system. It was designed to do this. The so algorithm designed it. No, the mark, no, no, the, the system also designed it. The algorithms will keep playing on it and they will make it. But the, the, the NSC had facilitated this whole operation that certain servers got the information early and therefore certain select brokers had access to those servers which got the information earlier than the others. And therefore they benefited from it. That in, in a nutshell is what happened. Okay. Now here there are some enormous profits to be made. So, so you, what you're saying is that there were certain brokers or certain entities or certain players in the stock market who received information, classified information, information that was... No, not classified. No, it is that they just got the information early than what the others got it. So they were able to game the system. They, they got unfair exactly. benefits. Right. They, they, they were given what you might describe as arbitrage opportunities. Yes, because they just they got the same information that the others got, but they just got it a little earlier. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I have uh, one last question for you. Uh, I mean, there are several questions, of course. And this con concerns the uh, former chief regulatory officer, Dr. V.R. Narasimhan. He was the compliance officer. He was supposed to enforce the SECC regulations. He was supposed to report to SEBI independently. He has over 40 years of experience in uh, as an educator, as a person who knows the financial markets. He was a division chief for secondary markets in, in SEBI itself. Now, he's at present a dean and a professor of practice at the School for Regulatory Studies and Supervision and the School for Corporate Governance at the National Institute of Securities Markets. 
Now, this is supposed to be a public trust, but remember, it has been set up and established by SEBI, the Securities and Exchange Board of India. So, should Dr. Narasimhan continue in, that, in these posts, in these positions that he is holding even as we are talking? Any self-respecting individual, Paranjoy, the moment they received a show cause notice from the regulator, should have immediately resigned from such positions. Later, if he had been proved innocent, he could have always been appointed again. The very fact that this individual did not voluntarily resign indicates the kind, the quality, the caliber of individuals who are put into such sensitive posts. And sad, again, I must say, I'm, you know, this is the norm in corporate India that most people occupying high offices appear to share similar values. Because today there's been a great and tremendous erosion of the value system in the higher echelons of corporate India. And this includes the political class, it includes the judiciary, and it includes the regulator as well. So they don't feel, they don't think anything is wrong if they continue, even when they are indicted like this, you know, they should have immediately resigned. They will all profess okay. their innocence, no doubt. Okay, let, let me just quickly return to what is arguably the most scandalous aspect of the SEBI report, and that is the association between Mr. Anand Subramaniam and Ms. Chitra Ramakrishna. It was not just his appointment, appointment the kind of perquisites he got, first class airfare across the globe. He often accompanied Ms. Ramakrishna outside the country. His wife, was employed by the National Stock Exchange. He would spend two or three days in a week in Chennai. Now, all of this shows that this association was not just uh, leading to conflicts of interests and, and scandalous, whichever way you want to look at it, but it just showed how the entire system could be so subverted by a particular individual. While uh, uh, Ravi Narayan and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Ravi Chandran and all these people seem to have just looked the other way. See, again, I am not surprised because, you know, I have been exposing a lot of these type of conducts and behavior in the financial sector, in the private sector mainly. And you will find that the senior executives, those who are close to the CEO, they live a very charmed existence. That basically, as long as you do what the CEO wants, you can do practically anything. You will not be faulted. You will not be hauled up. And most importantly, you will constantly be rewarded. I've seen this in the case of Yes Bank. I've seen this in the case of Axis Bank. I've seen this in the case of HDFC Bank, in Indusind Bank. So unlike the public sector, where if you, you know, uh, challenge this year, you will be posted on either the Northeast or Kashmir or given some departments like planning. In the private sector, if you challenge the CEO, you will be sacked. You will okay. be fired. So th therefore, the culture is always get say yes and give a salute all the time to all the right. CEO. All right. I mean, I, I know I'm sort of moving back and forth a little bit. Besides being imposed, I mean, besides being barred from participating in the markets, besides being fined, besides being penalized, uh, SEBI uh, has also asked both Ms. Ramakrishna, Mr. Ravi Narayan, uh, to disgorge or return a quarter of the salary they drew financial year 13 and 14. And uh, we find that SEBI's estimate says that the National Stock Exchange was a highly profitable organization. It earned a profit of 624 crores uh, between 2010-11 and 2013-14, only from its co-location operations. So uh, by asking these individuals to disgorge, which is a, a, a way of saying, give back what you had, what the, what 25% of the salary you got, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, does this uh, also mean that, you know, you're holding them up? I mean, you, you are sending out a signal 
don't do this and 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 it it, it has an impact on on others and dissuades others from abusing the system you see when a regulated entity knowingly commits violations what is the calculation that they do they take the calculation that if i do such violation i will get a certain amount of x which is illegal however if i am caught i will be fined a fraction of that x therefore i will continue to do that operation because the penalty is not severe enough okay. therefore what any regulator should do is first quantify how much the ill gotten gains came from such deeds and then your fine should be a multiple of that amount but in india we see the exact other way around you're fining these individual and these entities a fraction of that amount so how can that be an impediment Okay. So they all these people they take this calculation and they continue to do it because they know that even if they are caught, they will be fined a fraction of the amount they have gained. All right. I have to conclude our conversation here. Last words from you. Your final observations. The important lessons we need to learn from this scandal. See the important lesson which one has to see is that you look at the macro context. we welcome liberalization we welcome competition you know we welcome capital flows and all this you see nse has come up because of that nse came up because the bsc was being misgoverned right the nse itself has foreign you know shareholding in them they even got you know people representing them on their board and there was a belief in this theory that this will lead to ensuring better public commitment it will ensure better corporate governance but what are we actually seeing we are actually seeing the opposite you're seeing extremely abysmal standards of corporate governance so what does it say about this grand theory of privatizing everything treating such events as liberalization you know the regulators should be you know toughened up but everything we see everyone is working in collusion so that a few can profit enormously at the cost of the public but nobody is challenging this basic theory and that okay. to me is the larger question today okay well thank you so much hemendra for sharing your views with the viewers of news click and being so frank and candid in your uh, in in explaining the circumstances which have led to this controversy relating to the national stock exchange and in particular its former managing director and ceo ms chitra ramkrishna as well as its former top officers including mr anand subramaniam besides us thank you very much for being with us keep watching news click subscribe to the channel click on that button thank you very much for being with us